Joel, when did you know you were ready to get married? When I had my first crush. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, I feel when I finished my education, when I finished my post graduation, I was about 27, 28, 29 years old at that time. <laughs> Around that time, I felt that I was ready to get married. Yeah. So you were just like at the right age, that ready to be on the marriage mart. I think so. I mean, I always felt that I was called for marriage, and um, and at that time, it just felt right. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about you, Susanna? So I think I always assumed I would get married in my early twenties because my mother and my sister both did. Um, but I do remember having that question when I was a teenager, just like, how do you know when you're ready to get married? Um, is it because I didn't feel ready at that point. So I asked my mom once. I said, uh, how how will I know when I'm ready to get married? And my mom gave me this really, you know, these words of wisdom. She said, "You'll just know." <laughs> 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 and in a way, that's true. But are there any more specific um, ways to know when you are ready to get married? Let's talk. Let's about talk about it. it. I'm Joel. <laughs> and I'm Susanna. And we and are that Catholic, Catholic couple. couple. Back after quite a while. I know. <laughs> so the question: How do you know whether you're ready to get married? Uh, How do you know? It's a good question to ask, and uh, no one else can probably answer it for you. But there are some principles and probably pointers that uh, people give you, and people I'm sure people have spoken to you about it. And today we are here to give you our two bits about it. So it's a good question to have. For most people, don't actually ask that question because it's just a given that okay, at this point in life, I'm at this age, and I just have to get married one way or another. Um, but if you are asking that question, am I ready? That means you are thinking in a little more intentional way, and that's a good thing. You know, it's good to live your life intentionally. In Luke fourteen, Jesus says, "For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it?" So here you are estimating the cost, saying, "Do I have enough in my bank balance to pay for this, you know, this venture of marriage?" So it's a good question, and what is it that we need? What are the uh, prerequisites? What are the things that should be in place? A good degree, a fat bank balance, good place to live, and what else? Uh, well, a lot of things that people will say, right? And those are the prerequisites to get married. Is there any truth to this? Um, everyone has an opinion. The aunties, the mama, and dad, everyone will tell you what you need to have. Um, but the real question is: Are those things really important? Um, we will talk about that, but before I talk about any of that, I want to give you a Catholic perspective. Marriage is a vocation; it's a calling from God. So, before you start preparing for marriage, before you jump into this whole marriage thing, I would suggest first pray and discern and ask God: Are you calling me to marriage at all, or are you calling me to religious life? Because He is calling some of us to religious life, and we do need to ask Him. Um, but most of us are called to married life, right? That's sort of the default <laughs> vocation in a way. And if you have that desire in your heart, you've prayed about it, um, you are feeling that pull towards it. You feel peace in your heart about um, moving towards marriage. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that you need to get into place before you start looking for a marriage partner? There is some truth to what people have to say, you know. In uh... Marriage is actually a very significant undertaking, and uh, you do need to be practically ready for it. I mean, you don't really need a fat bank balance, or you don't need a high-paying job, or you don't need a great big bungalow to live in. But uh, what you really do need, in a very practical way, is uh, an ability to provide for your family. Because when you get married, you are taking on the responsibility of someone else other than yourself. Mm -hmm. You probably do have that responsibility now with your parents and elderly people in your family, but with marriage, you are, you know, inviting someone else into your life, and then along with that comes children, and uh, it is it is a significant undertaking, and uh, you probably don't need a lot, but you definitely need an ability to provide, and uh, I, th I think that is an important prerequisite. Yeah. So Joel actually is talking in a very specific way to the men, and I know this sounds very um, old-fashioned, but we actually do encourage the men in particular to be uh, but responsible in being a provider. And the reason is 
in a catholic marriage we are called to be open to life to be open to children and to have children and god has chosen women to be the ones to bear those children to give birth to um, look after children especially when they are younger uh, they are very dependent on their mothers and that means women usually have to take the back seat when it comes to earning or providing and they need to have a husband they can rely on to provide for the family at that point so men this is your responsibility in a particular way and for women i would say um something that you can do even now beforehand is if you are in a position to earn right now please save be responsible financially because it will ease the stress of finances when you do get married um and also if you are preparing for marriage maybe look for and pray for a flexible kind of job where you're able to prioritize um babies and children and if you need to be able to earn that you're able to earn somewhat as well now coming to another aspect of what the world says to have a great job or good job or steady job uh you know if your job consumes all your time like uh, to be a doctor to be a specialist we have to go through a time of residency and for most of us our residencies are very very busy working for 36 hours 48 hours at a stretch and if you are in such a situation then probably it's not advisable to uh, consider marriage right then because uh again it is as significant a undertaking it is a time consuming undertaking marriage so you really need to invest in this person that you are going to get married to invest in this institution that you are starting to build so it is important that uh, you consider the kind of job that you are in right now and uh, think whether you are ready to get married and uh, your job should also be able to uh, give you that ability to provide so one of the most significant expenses that comes in immediately after you get uh, married is a uh, place to live in if you're not going to live in a joint family and uh, that implies being able to have a house of your own or being able to rent a house mm. and when you rent a house you have a sizable deposit that you have to put in mm. there's a rent that you have to pay in month in and month out and if you unfortunately struggle later with your job or anything you should have some backup so mm-hmm. it is important to have some in your bank balance it is important to be ready for an emergency and uh, to be able to live within your means mm-hmm. which is uh, important yeah yeah i would say even if you are planning to live in the joint family it's good to be prepared to have a backup plan in case it doesn't work out um i know many people for whom um it didn't work out and they did need to move out and they had to be prepared and willing to also set aside money to pay for as an important expense it's important to have a place that your family can be a family so think about that beforehand what about age susana uh, do you think there's a particular age after you after which you feel that you are ready or there is only one correct age to get married that is 27 years old All right. At the most, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. But once you reach thirty, that's it. Cut off. No marriage after that. <laughs> we, of course, are joking. Both of us were in our thirties when we met each other and when we got married. Uh, so I don't actually think there is only one particular age. Although people tell you that, and everyone, I think most of us start off with a number in our mind. Um, but I think we need to throw the number out um, and think about other aspects other than actual age. Mm-hmm. um and I, i would say the most important of those are think about maturity you know someone might be mature enough at 24 and some might not be <laughs> mature enough or ready to bear responsibility even at 29 or 30 so um maturity and ability to take responsibility for others i would say is more important than the actual age exactly what do you think makes sense i mean uh, there is a legal age for marriage in india in 21 but uh, uh there is, there is a reason why uh, that is set and maturity does uh, matter a lot age definitely doesn't change much people may be very old and still you know not be mature at all so yeah it makes sense now that we have spoken about all of this practical concerns i mean uh, we are that catholic couple catholic part of it has to come in so uh what about the spiritual concerns or emotional or psychological concerns um i personally feel that uh, if you are stuck in a serious scene mm-hmm. and you you need to deal with it before you uh, consider or even think that you are ready for marriage uh 
for a long time i used to struggle with pornography and this was a scene that i had to deal with before i could get into a serious relationship mm. so it is important it is very very important that uh, you deal deal with serious sins in your life before you you will consider that you are ready for marriage yeah and i would say that it's not only you know we often think of pornography as the only thing that people are stuck in but there are a variety of serious sins including unfortunately i know of several people who would get stuck in impure relationships with the wrong person right somebody who they're not planning to marry and are not able to marry but just um, they keep hooking up with or getting together with get that stuff out of your life right because you're not ready for marriage if you are still involved in that way even if it's not physical relationships but you're stuck in some kind of relationship that's going nowhere um get out of that before being ready before thinking that you can be ready for marriage and if you have some serious psychological or medical conditions uh firstly it is important that you seek help for them i mean you you are probably seeking help for it and uh, in that case speak to your therapist speak to your doctor ask him is it okay if i consider marriage is it okay do you feel this is something that i can handle it's not that by having any of these um kind of struggles that you're automatically disqualified from marriage like everybody has something right they have different things they struggle with um but the question is are you um in a place where you have the tools to deal with it um are you in a place where you're able to care for others the other than yourself right um because if you have children you have a spouse um, you need to be able to care for them as well so it's helpful to get um, professional help and to ask them you know they will be able to guide you they might give you stuff to work on and help you to move forward until you are in a stable place and you're able to start something new what about faith sudana do you think faith is important do i <laughs> 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 i am a missionary you know um okay so not everyone's missionaries but we are speaking specifically um as catholics and to catholics um i would say if you are in a place where your faith and your relationship with god has taken a back seat or you are struggling with doubts or questions about your faith um i would say try to deal with those now um pursue this particular relationship with god try to find answers to your questions find um a mentor who you can even ask those questions to people who will pray with you talk to you answer your questions go on a retreat okay if you've lost that um experience of god go on a retreat try to reach that place of a solid relationship with god with god because that is going to affect everything about your relationship in in the future your marriage because it will affect who you marry it will affect um your whole decision making process and it will affect the kind of marriage that you have so get your faith in a good place um if you are watching this most likely you already do have that desire or that interest so this is a little encouragement to um take that next step and seek out a strong faith seek out that relationship with god um before you start seeking out a marriage partner get right with god first <laughs> yeah <laughs> um how about emotionally what kind of uh, preparation do you think uh, anyone should have emotionally before being ready for marriage hmm embarking on a new relationship is a very emotional matter so <laughs> if you are carrying a baggage out of your old we all do carry some baggage in some form or the other but uh, if you are carrying a significant baggage if you are just out of a breakup mm. or if you have just lost someone or if there's something with some very very significant you know trauma that has happened to you very recently you know take some time to heal mm. take some time to you know deal with it before you uh, sort of to latch on to someone else you know someone else should not be the bearer of your very heavy baggage you know deal with it and seek help i i always say you know it's always better to you know, see a therapist get help be you know deal with your baggage first and then get into a new relationship i've heard from many people who say okay i just had a breakup and now my parents are trying to make me meet someone um and you know and they there's to this, help me get over the to help me get over the previous person or the previous bad relationship but that's not how it works and it's not fair to a new person to be expected to heal your wounds from the past right you should be able to go in freely and be able to see them and love them for who they are um rather than constantly comparing them with the last relationship or going on talking to them about all of the stuff that's happened in the past 
um, you should have that freedom. You should be at a place of peace and a place of freedom. And sometimes that takes a little time. Um, it's a, a process which you have to go through. So I would say if it's just happened, if it's um, you've just come out of it, then you're not ready. Take a little time. And this is where being right with God also plays a role, you know, because you go to Jesus, the healer. Mm -hmm. No one else can heal you out of this, you know. God heals you, Jesus heals you and makes you ready for that one spouse of you. So you might be feeling a little overwhelmed by all these many things <laughs> that you have to get into place before you can get married. Um, but I want to reassure you, you don't have to be perfect. Um, and neither do you have to have everything perfectly worked out before you get married. Um, because actually marriage is one of those things where you learn on the job, right? And <laughs> for Joel and me, even though we thought we were totally ready before marriage, um, we learned a lot after getting married. A lot of issues that came up in ourselves, you know, things that rose to the surface where we had to learn how to work on them. And Jesus helped us, right? The sacrament of matrimony gives a lot of grace. And we've seen how God has given us the grace to um, love each other and to be more than we uh, had been in the past. So don't worry, um, you can um, get married even if you're not perfect. Um, and you do your best to deal with all of the stuff in the past and then you move forward. So before we end the video, here are some helpful tips to decide if you are ready. First and foremost, talk to a mentor. Go to someone and have a word and see. Ask them, hey, do you think I'm ready? The second one is pray about it. Um, ask God to show you, is fear holding you back from being ready? Or are you someone who leaps before you look? You know, um, So is it something that you need to grow in prudence and in patience? Um, God is able to show us our motivations and help us to know, are we ready or are we not ready? Ask yourself if you are ready for a sacrificial love and if you are ready to die to yourself. Marriage means a lot of sacrificial love. I think if you are just thinking of marriage as something where all your dreams are fulfilled and everything is just perfect and rosy and easy all the time, you're not ready for marriage. Um, it's a lot of dying to self. It's a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of giving up um, the easy parts of single life. But if you're ready for that, and you're ready to sacrifice, you're ready to um, give up a lot of that for something even better, um, then maybe you are ready for marriage. Um, and one bonus point, I found that it's helpful um, to know if God is calling you to something when you feel an excitement and a peace, when you think about marriage, when you think about moving forward, in your heart there's um, peace and there's excitement. So even if you feel that you are ready or maybe you're not ready, uh, if you are ready, you may probably not know what to do about it. So that's what our next video is going to be about. But right now, we, are, we would like to pray for you. So let's pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord our God, we thank you for the wisdom that you give us, O Lord Jesus, through people around us, through the teachings of the church. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this place where we are at, O Lord. And today we pray for all those who are discerning whether they are ready to get married or not, O Lord Jesus. We pray that you deal with their fears, O Lord. You console and comfort them, O Lord Jesus. You satisfy the longing of their hearts, O Lord Jesus. We lift them up to you. We pray a blessing over them that they would have clarity in their discernment, O Lord. O Holy Spirit, touch and anoint us all. In Jesus' most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.